Dear friends, we have already discussed what JSP or Java Server Pages are. In this video, we are going to discuss the life cycle of a Java Server Page. Okay, so first of all, uh, we should know that what basically uh, the JSP life cycle is. JSP life cycle basically is defined as a process from its creation till the destruction. Means at the initial time when a new page is created or a request for a new page is generated till the final response is being sent by the server. So the whole process from the creation of the page till the destruction of the page is called the life cycle of a JSP. Generally, this process starts when a client make a request to the server. As you can see in this diagram, we generally send a request with the help of a browser. So the browser say it is sending a request for hello world.jsp page. So what will happen? This hello world.jsp page request will be sent it to a server. That server server will recognize that it is a JSP page. So it will send it to the container. The container will process it accordingly and then it will send it back to the server and from the server it will send it back to the client. So the request is processed with the help of the whole life cycle that is going to be processed in between different stages. Generally there are many other steps in between but the most important stages or steps are JSP init, JSP service and JSP destroy. We are going to learn about these three methods or we can say the three life cycle methods later on in this tutorial. First of all, we should know that what a web container is. Basically, a web container is something which is processing the JSP code for us. It translates the JSP code into servlet class because generally every JSP page must be converted to a servlet first. Then only it is going to be processed later on. So the responsibility of converting a JSP page into servlet class is of the container. As you can see here, client is sending a request to the server. Server is sending the request back to the container. The container send the request to the servlet means it is containing it to the servlet. Then further, servlet is sending response to the container. Container again sending it to the server and then the client is receiving the response. So this is the whole process that is happening from sending a request till getting the response. So the container is playing a very important role here. Here we should also know the difference between a web server, web container and application server. A web server generally is a server that is capable of receiving HTTP request. As in previous diagram, we see that client is sending a request to the server. So a web server is capable of receiving this HTTP request interpreting it and then sending them back to the appropriate clients. Again, see in this diagram, server is receiving the request and server is responding to the client. So receiving this HTTP request from the client and sending the process response to the client is the task of a web server. So the example of a web server is Apache web server. There could be many other web server, but for this GSP purpose, we can say that Apache web server is a web server. Then a web container is a J2EE compliant implementation which provides an environment for a servlet and JSP to run. You have been heard about the Tomcat. Tomcat is basically a typical web container. It basically holds the JSP engine and servlet engines to process the JSP or servlet requests as well. Finally, application server is basically the combination of the web container as well as the web server. So application is a complete server. An example of an application is like PR WebLogic, IBM WebSphere, Oracle application server, etc. This these will have the combination of in one place they will have web server as well as web container. Okay. Now let's see. Suppose we have a JSP page like this one in which we are having an, a variable say count of entries at type and we are initializing it to zero and we are printing the plus plus count. Okay, so what will happen when we will send the request for this JSP page, it will first be converted to this kind of uh, servlet file and the JSP service method will be invoked here. And these kind of codes that, that you have been learned in servlet means it will be converted to the servlet code. So this is this basically happens whenever a request for JSP moves on to the server, 
the container converts it to the specific servlet file. So the first step that comes is JSP compilation. In JSP compilation means request is there, server has received the request, it's sent to the container. Container is going to compile the JSP page. What it will do, it will pass the JSP, turn the JSP into servlet and then compile the servlet. Okay, as you have learned, as you have seen that we do not compile JSP page, we directly send it, but it must be compiled somewhere. So who is going to compile it? The container. So the container is converting it into servlet first and then compiling it. So this step is called JSP compilation. After compilation, JSP initialization is there. In this JSP init method is used. This init method is called once in the life of a JSP. So uh, it basically performed at, at only once times and uh, with a servlet init method, what we generally do in this method is we initialize the database connections, we open our files, we create lookup tables. So till the servlet is there, till the JSP is there, uh, init method will only be called once. Then the JSP will be executed. For that, JSP service method will be used. It is similar to the do post, do get, or service method of uh, servlet in which HTTP servlet request and servlet response to classes objects are being passed and it handles all the type of service related codes like uh, the, all the methods like you have in get or post or delete. So whatever you will pass over there, that will be processed using the JSP service method. Then finally, when everything is being processed, you got the result, there is no other thing required, then the destruction phase of JSP lifecycle comes. It basically represents when the JSP is being removed from uh, use by the container. Container has done its task and it do not need the page again. Then the JSP destroy method will be called. It is equivalent to the destroy method for servlets that we have been learned in servlet part. And it overrides the JSP destroy method when you need to perform any kind of cleanup, such as you have opened uh, the database connection in init method, you are going to release it in cleanup or destroy method. So JSP destroy method, this method is called whenever you want to close the open files, you want to close the database connections that you have used. So in that case, this JSP destroy method has been called. In summary, we can say that initially a JSP page request comes. Okay, then it is being handled by the container. Container checks. Okay, it basically checking that servlet exists or not. Either the JSP servlet is already available there or not. If it is the first time, then it will pass the JSP, generate the servlet code and compile it to the servlet. If the servlet is compiled earlier, means it is the same request for the earlier servlet or GSP, then what will happen? Uh, it will say, yes, it has already exist. So the servlet is being loaded from the cache. And then again, it will check if it is loaded, if it is not loaded, then load it. If it is already loaded, then generate the response for that one. But if you change something in GSP, again, the compilation needs then in that case, it will again pass the JSP, again generate the servlet code, again compile it and then load it. Finally, the response is being sent it back to the server and from where it will be received by the client. So this is what the lifecycle method of a JSP. So basically, the main method, main thing as there is the initialization, then there is the compilation, initialization, loading and finally, uh, processing the request and if process if request is completed process completely then destruction of the JSP server and finally uh, these all steps makes the life cycle of a JSP page okay so thank you very much for listening to me please like and subscribe for having more videos like this thank you very much